The production and distribution company Ace Entertainment has 402 rated listings on their IMDb. And based on the user scores, CI Ape is ranked 401. The only film ranked lower is the Logan Paul film Airplane Mode. Hides your drugs and hides your liquids because we searching everybody around here. Welcome aboard, Flight 1524. We are always surprised when you choose us. Ace Entertainment doesn't provide public information about how successful their films are, so no online sources know the budget or potential revenue of CIA. But considering that the main actor in the film is on Instagram promoting a petition he made asking one of the distributors to greenlight the sequel, I'm guessing it didn't perform well. The petition currently has 415 signatures. A link in the description. Alpha Dog, which is the name of his character in the movie, started this petition. With your help, we can all lend a signature in getting a sequel made for the epic kids film C.I. Ape. More monkey shenanigans, more Dr. Devious, and more Alpha Dog. Besides, who doesn't love an unnecessary sequel? Reasons for signing. Seeing you in prison delights me. Ha ha ha. Seeing you in prison delights me. Ha 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 ha. Just to see you in prison delights me. <laughs> Oh, and of course, there's the prison video. I've been in solitary confinement for two weeks, 21 days. That, how many days are in two weeks? 14? I'm not good with math and dates. Pretty much anything outside of supervillainry, I'm really going to drop the ball. But two weeks in solitary confinement. We interrupt this Kino for a word from our sponsor. Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is completely free to play and it's available for both your phone and computer so you can play it anywhere. This RPG is perfect for people like me who love dungeon raids and epic boss battles. Trying to push to the next stage of a dungeon is always a great challenge, and I enjoy experimenting with new team compositions to find the best strategy for victory. Raid is back for the new year with new features. We're talking a new season of the Forge Pass, a fourth anniversary Titan event, plus new legendary champions including one based on Ronda Rousey. And you can get her free just by logging into Raid for 7 days between now and February 20th. And to celebrate Ronda's arrival in Raid, you can use the special promo code RAIDRONDA to get a bunch of free stuff. And that code works whether you're a new or returning player. If you are a new player and you sign up using my link in the description or by scanning my QR code here on screen, you'll get all kinds of unique bonuses including the free epic champion Jotun, 100k silver, 50 gems, and two epic skill tomes. Thanks to Raid for sponsoring this video. Now back to some true prison kino. Second, I'm going to actually go to the mess hall, uh, cafeteria, and get something to eat because while I was in solitary confinement, a new supervillain came in, known as the Chef. If you haven't heard of him and you don't know who he is, then obviously you're not a supervillain and you're not frequenting the right establishments. But he makes a wonderful chicken piccata. Make you talk Italian for at least a month. Terrible person. Solid supervillain, but really a bad person. I can honestly say that one minute YouTube video was funnier than anything in CI Ape. Oh, spoiler alert by the way, the villain ends up in jail at the end of the movie. Anyway, now that you know what we're in for, let's get in forer. As always, I'll be scoring this monkey movie based on three criteria. Monkey hijinks, monkey performance, and overall movie quality. Monkey hijinks is the measure of how many wacky shenanigans a monkey gets into over the course of a film. And as a motion picture about a chimpanzee who works as a field agent for the Central Intelligence Agency, you would expect CI Ape to feature a diverse collection of shenaniganic monkey business. But much like Ryan Johnson, this film subverts those expectations. 
In the opening scene, things start off promising. The central intelligence ape begins the film ziplining into a dangerous new mission. There are black men with sniper rifles patrolling the roof of a warehouse, and CI Ape needs to sneak past them and into the air duct so he can then go into a computer room and put a flash drive into a computer so a teenage girl who also works for the CIA can hack it. And also the monkey can speak English. You're one mysterious monkey. Don't hate the player, hate the game. And don't call me a monkey. An armed guard enters the room, but CIA Ape is able to distract him by speaking English and then utilizes his black belt and monkey kung fu to defeat him. How did you get in here? Zipline cropping hooks stuck by the guards and through the ventilation shaft. A talking ape? I prefer chimp. <laughs> With the hacking complete, CGI Ape then runs away from bad guys while a bunch of red lights are flashing. But he ends up cornered in a hallway full of armed guards. Freeze! And now I'm getting hyped. A little bit of monkey kung fu is enough to deal with one armed guard, but how will CI Ape deal with three? Will he pull out some sort of uh, banana peel gun that will make his enemies slip and fall? Or maybe he starts smoking a cigar that shoots out tranquilizer darts. Whatever it is, I'm sure it'll be logical, exciting, creative, top-tier monkey hijinks that earns this film several points. Freeze! Um, a little help? If you just got action scene blue balls, don't worry, relief is coming. CI Ape escapes the gunman and then runs into a room full of bad guys who now, for some reason, don't have guns. CGI Ape then performs the most impressive action scene in the entire film, and yes, they did blow their load less than eight minutes into the movie. While doing some crazy monkey flips, CGI Ape defeats each henchman in a single blow without ever actually making contact. Wow! I can't believe a monkey with an initial in his name was able to learn advanced armament hockey. To celebrate their success with the CIA mission, the CIA team has a picnic in the park. And the elderly, fat, bald boss has his hand on his wiener, and he's looking at the teenage girl while making weird faces. The CI ape sees this, and he uses his frisbee as a weapon to knock the old man's wiener out of his hand. I'm sorry, but I have to give this movie a bonus point for this sequence alone. It just might be pure Kino. There's also this teenage boy who works in the CI Ape division, and he obviously has a crush on the girl, but is too nervous to make a move. So, when they're leaving the park, CI Ape throws the frisbee to the boy, revealing the girl's phone number, given to a secret admirer without her consent, which is definitely a total bro move. This monkey is a complete Chad as far as I'm concerned. And I wish this level of chimp charisma was maintained throughout the rest of the film. But unfortunately, our time with the CI ape is about to come to an end. Now I know what you're thinking, but Jimmy, we're not even 20 minutes into this 82 minute movie. Could the monkey hijinks really be over? Well, shockingly, Yes. The CI Ape team is briefed on their next mission, invading Alpha Dog Island to investigate a serial loiterer who goes by the name Alpha Dog. CI Ape then performs his final action stunt of the movie by flying on a jetpack over an ocean of sharks to sneak onto the island. At this point, the film stops being the CI Ape movie and instead becomes the Alpha Dog movie. Now, to the film's credit, Alpha Dog is the best character in the movie, and his scenes are far better than anything involving the CGI monkey. So what else does the monkey do in the movie beyond the 20 minute mark? Well, he mostly just walks around in the shadows, spies on the bad guys, gives the bad guy's daughter a hug, 
copies a scene from E.T. where he pretends to be a toy. Basically anything that wouldn't cost much for the CGI budget. The vast majority of the scenes at this point are just Alpha Dog and his fellow villains sitting around and talking, and then that scene again, and then a third time. And then a fourth time, at one point he eats dinner, but we'll get to all that later. The problem is there aren't any more thrilling action scenes or monkey-based shenanigans. And the biggest outrage is the climax of the film. Remember the opening scene when CIA plugs a flash drive into a computer and then fights five people for eight seconds? The climax of the film is he plugs a flash drive into a computer and then doesn't even fight anyone! He just leaves and the mission is successful without any issues! The monkey does literally nothing for 70% of the film, and his final action is a watered-down version of what he did in the opening scene! Don't hate the player, hate the game. This egregious misuse of a titular monkey character is a plight on the face of the monkey movie genre and perpetuates its poor reputation in the film industry. It gave me a few sparks of Kino in the opening 10 minutes, but the monkey disappeared from the majority of the film. In terms of monkey hijinks, I give this one a 2, plus the one bonus point for the hot dog scene, giving it a final score of 3 out of 10 bananas. If you've watched this series reviewing every monkey movie before, you know my hatred for CGI monkeys. The world is filled to the brim with talented monkeys like myself, waiting desperately by the telephone for Hollywood to come calling. But these days, filmmakers are lazy, or cheap, or concerned about humane work conditions for apes. Oh, I'm sorry, are we humanes now? And this movie in particular had such a low budget that it's a miracle we got any CGI action scenes at all. We know this because Treehouse reporter Eggy Eggman Rodriguez slid into the Instagram DMs of the film's costume designer, and she claimed, we had like no budget on that movie and about five days to prep it all, haha. <laughs> so lots of scrounging pieces and mixing and matching. Here's the full message if you want to learn about Alpha Dog's costume. Anyway, in terms of monkey performance, I was gonna give this a 0 out of 10 since there is no monkey performance. It's just a CGI abomination. But then, I remembered something that seemed off. From editing the mailbag video, I remembered the CI ape having some sort of accent or deep voice in the movie trailer. So I checked, and yeah, listen to this. A talking ape? I prefer chimp. A talking ape? I prefer chimp. 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 The monkey's voice literally sounds better in the trailer. Why the hell would they change it? Or did the people making the movie trailer recognize that the performance was terrible, so they dubbed over it just to make the movie seem slightly better than it is? I don't know. But this is the first case I've ever seen where the actor in the trailer is better than the actor in the movie. For that reason alone, I am once again breaking precedent. And in terms of monkey performance, I'm awarding CI Ape negative two bananas, bringing its running total to one out of 20 bananas. The problem with making an action movie about a talking CGI character is that those are two of the most expensive elements in filmmaking, action and CGI. So when you're a no-budget studio trying to make some sort of meme kids movie about a talking monkey for as little money as possible so you can strike gold with streaming and DVD sales, you don't really have the money to make quality action or quality CGI. Which is how you end up with an action movie that is 95% not action, and a CGI monkey movie that is 75% humans sitting around talking. Or even better, a kids movie that randomly has a subplot about divorce destroying the main heroine's entire life and family. But I only did it because I don't want you and mom to get divorced. I'm sure you understand that the love your mom and I used to share is just not something you can 
hack into a computer and fix. Imagine being a divorced dad, promising your kid a fun action movie about a talking monkey. <laughs> Evidently, 50% of all American children will watch their parents get divorced. So CIA Ape is really a cinematic landmine, all for the sake of keeping the plotline as cheap as possible. Remember those armed guards who were stopped dead in their tracks by a sprinkler system? Well, 20 seconds later, they run out of the hallway to chase CIA Ape, and they're all completely dry. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't want to get wet and cold again for the sake of continuity in the opening scene of CIA? I don't think you're taking your role of armed henchman who gets paralyzed by water number two very seriously. And frankly, as a viewer, if the filmmakers aren't going to take CIA seriously, how can I? That brings us to the man who almost certainly cares the most about CIA, and that's Alpha Dog himself. When I say Alpha Dog is the best part of the movie, I give half the credit to his wacky performance and half to his incredible costume. So again, shout out to that costume designer for throwing together something like this with very little time or money. He's basically dressed like a National Socialist leather daddy. And it turns out he literally is a daddy. The new main plot of the movie is about Alpha Dog's rocky relationship with his daughter. As if divorce wasn't bad enough, Alpha Dog is a widow! His wife died of cancer! And his daughter spends most of the movie crying about how lonely and sad she is because her mom is dead from cancer. My dad never started this whole stupid thing until after she died. It's like her cancer made him so mad at the world he decided to take it over to punish it. But don't worry, only 8% of American children will see one of their parents die before the age of 18. So this one is less of a cinematic landmine and more of a stab to the heart. It's the classic story of a father being more committed to his work than his family. But in this case, the dad is a supervillain who wants to produce weaponized robot dogs that will allow him to rule the world by force. And it just so happens his big meeting with the Council of Crime is on the same day as his daughter's birthday. Uh-oh! So he's running back and forth from talking to his daughter, to talking to the Council of Crime, to talking to his wacky mad scientist sidekick who is building the robots, and the movie is doing everything it can to stretch the runtime to feature length without adding anything to the budget. There are legitimately four scenes of Alpha Dog walking into the Council of Crime and trying to waste their time since his robot dogs aren't ready yet. And the writer uses the lazy padding type of kids movie dialogue where every character in the scene gets to take a turn saying something, but really they're all just saying the exact same thing in different ways. We want to see it. Yes, show us. Where are they? Let us see what they can do. At one point, the movie gets bored with itself and Alpha Dog randomly starts dancing. The chefs on Alpha Dog Island are making food for Alpha Daughter's birthday, and they have a long, pointless, unfunny conversation about leap years. First one up in the morning, the last one to go to bed. Seven days a week, 365 days a year. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't forget about leap years. These characters never show up again, by the way. This entire scene could be cut and you wouldn't be missing anything from the movie. It's all just a terrible, boring waste of time. And the only redeemable quality is Alpha Dog's actor trying his best to have fun with the role. That's why I can't get upset about him bringing the character back on YouTube or begging Lionsgate to fund the sequel. That man tried his best to entertain me. So in my book, he's a hero. But yeah, the movie sucked and I hated it. I gave it the lowest score possible on Letterboxd, and I'll give it the same score here. In terms of overall movie quality, I give this one a 1 out of 10, giving CIA a final score of 2 out of 30 bananas, making it tied for last place on the official ranking of all monkey movies. And folks, I've got to be honest, CI Ape was a life-changing experience for me. I'm done watching monkey movies with CGI monkeys. 
or cartoon monkeys, or even people wearing monkey costumes. I'm sure that 2001 Space Odyssey movie is probably very good, but those are humans wearing monkey costumes, so it can go straight in the trash. Anyway, if you want to support the videos I make and join my Discord server, check out patreon.com slash mumkey. And this monkey box episode is almost over, so shout out to my man Steve Harvey!